yet. <laughs> <laughs> Well, while we uh, remained uh, socially distanced, uh, the life of the church continues in other ways besides being able to be together in person. And so adult formation continues as it has. And we have some new offerings coming up next month in September. So I thought rather than just write a paragraph about that, I'd actually invite the folk who are going to be leading those opportunities to share what they're doing with you all. So uh, with me are Alice Davis, Roland Tata, Peggy Tudor, and Jim Irwin, and they are going to share and what the, the, the formation opportunities they're going to be leading next month. So beginning with Alice, let's turn it over to you. What have you got for us? Thank you, Sean. Well, I've got a question for the folks who are sort of watching right now. Um, you, have you ever decided not to discuss politics with a family mm. member or a friend because you know it's going to end in an argument? Or have you ever been walking by the television set and heard the yelling, talking heads yelling at each other and thought, I have to get out of here, I can't listen to this? Well, I know that I have. And so the question came to me during one of those times, how could I learn to listen better? How could I learn to be respectful of all opinions, opposite of mine and, and in the middle of mine. So I came across this book while I was wandering through the Danville Library one day. It's called, I Think You're Wrong, But I'm Listening. And it's by Sarah Stewart Holland and Beth Silver. And in it, they come up with some ways that we can have what they refer to as grace-filled conversations with each other. And I think I look at those grace-filled conversations as something that we as a community of faith can use as we go forward into times that do want to try to force us into opposite corners of the same, of the same world. So I'm hoping that as we go through this book, we can learn from each other. We can learn to listen. We can learn to respectfully and empathetically disagree with each other, but still find common ground on which we can build our relationships. So I hope you join me. Um, I'm going to have the group, when they form, decide what day and time they would most uh, like to meet. And so please give me, give me a call or send me an email and I would be glad to uh, include you in that invitation. Great. Thank you, Alice. All right, next, uh, Peggy and Roland are leading a five-week experience and uh, going to ask them to tell us a little bit about that. Hello, I'm Peggy and Roland Tarter and I would like to invite you to join us for a series of conversations regarding the church's response to caring for persons with mental illness and their families. Roland, tell us a little bit about uh, the curriculum that we will be using. Uh, the curriculum comes from the Presbyterian Church USA and was formulated over some period of time, beginning back actually about 11 years ago, when uh, a statement came forth uh, to the uh, denominations distributed to all the presbyteries and focused on uh, the increasing need for uh, adequate resources for coping with mental illness and families with mental mm -hmm. health problems. Uh, since that time, uh, this curriculum has been used widely and is being revised again since uh, it is over a decade later. But it's very good material and I think everybody will benefit greatly from the kind of opportunities it provides for us to talk about ways in which we can prevent mental illness from uh, exiling, uh, isolating families from the church and uh, its ministry. There will be five sessions on the five Wednesday nights in September, and we will meet for about an hour on Wednesday evenings at seven o'clock using Zoom. The first four sessions, we will talk about the definitions of mental illness and recognizing the many issues uh, that confront those persons with mental illness and the families that care for them. And we will discuss the church's role in extending hospitality and support and develop a plan on how we can be advocates in the community taking care of these families. 
So our uh, fifth session, uh, which will be September 30th, uh, we will invite in uh, stakeholders in our community, specifically mental health uh, providers, uh, folks in law enforcement, folks in um, the detention center where uh, folks uh, in our community often wind up because of lack of resources uh, who have mental health problems. And uh, our purpose will be to understand what resources are available and then to identify where there are gaps or needs, things to which we might respond to enable folks to access the resources that we have more adequately and to find other ways to give support, companionship, and ministry to families uh, in these uh, problem areas. We would really like for you to register for the class. There's a booklet that we would like for you to pick up. And we invite you to call the church office, talk to Nicole, and she will take your email down and tell you how you can pick up the, the booklet. We uh, look forward to having you join us on our first Wednesday, September the 2nd at 7 o'clock on Zoom. Great. There. Thanks, Peggy and Ron. Uh, and then Jim, tell us what you are offering. Well, uh, the Thursday morning Bible study uh, has been going on for centuries, I think. <laughs> uh, but uh, uh, with various teachers over the years. Uh, the plan now is for the Thursday morning Bible study to reconvene at 1030 on September the 3rd by Zoom. Our study is uh, designed to explore the development of the special relationship between God and the children of Israel. Exodus has perhaps uh, influenced Judaism more deeply than uh, any other book of the Old Testament. It will be an overview of Exodus. I say overview because the approach will be to look at the events in the history of the people of Israel, uh, that took place between 1450 and 1200 BC that followed the Genesis account of Jacob, uh, Israel, uh, and the family journey into uh, Egypt. Uh, the group in a previous uh, year has already studied Genesis. So we kind of jump around from the Old Testament to the New Testament. Uh, Tradition has it that Exodus and the first five books of the Bible were written by Moses. Anal analysis of the uh, books cast doubt on that conclusion. The best theory is that Exodus developed from oral history concerning uh, different elements, like uh, J, which was the uh, uh, Yahweh uh, tradition, and E, the Eloist, and D, the Deuteronomist and compiled by P, a priestly uh, writer or writers during the Babylonian exile. We have great discussion. Come join us for an hour every Thursday beginning September the 3rd. That's great, thank you, Jim. Well, uh, so there's three offerings uh, that you could uh, participate in one, or two or all of them, depending on how much time you have. But as, uh, hopefully there's something in there that tweaked your interest that you'd like to do. Uh, these, all three of these studies, as you've already heard, are gonna be led by people who are passionate <laughs> and care deeply about the material they're gonna be uh, presenting and the conversations they'll be facilitating. So hopefully you can join uh, one of those and make use of, and connect with other members of our community. All right, well, hope you've enjoyed this and uh, we'll see you in one of these studies next month.